Hey everyone, my name is Paul Inverum Toddkill. I am a commentator and host in the world of esports. And in this video, I'm going to teach you how I produce at home esports broadcasts. I'm going to take you behind the scenes, talk about the tech I use, and talk about the nitty gritty, how I set up my scenes, how I look at graphics, uh, and how I actually put a broadcast on the air. Traditionally, we'd be doing this in a professional studio environment, but just due to the world we live in right now, a lot of us are back to producing these esports tournaments from home. I've done well over 100 of these over the course of my career, and I'm just going to give you the simple breakdown of how I do it. This is going to be the bare bones explanation to maybe give you a bit of a starting place if this is something you are looking to do yourself. So let's get into it. I'm using Streamobs OBS here. You can use traditional OBS. This is really just a preference thing. I'm going to start things off. Uh, these are just sort of just how I uh, take a look at some of my scenes. Uh, I've been doing some amateur Valorant tournaments lately just because I've been enjoying playing and casting Valorant. Uh, so I am going to start uh, look at this through that lens just for this because it's something very popular right now. So I call this our, our duo lobby. Basically, this is where you and your co-caster are going to be spending your time in between games, chatting, setting up the lobby, setting up the storylines, that kind of stuff. So how I do this, and this looks like a lot going on. There's a lot happening on the screen. This is literally just, I just opened the last program that I had, the last project that I had open, and this is what was going on. So I traditionally use Discord to capture my commentators or my co-commentators audio and video. We use Skype in the past, but I'm gonna be honest, Skype is garbage. Don't, don't use it if you can help it. Unless you need to take NDI, which is a whole other conversation, probably don't do that. Discord is totally fine for this. You can just capture it as I think a display capture, sorry, uh, Windows capture, something like that, and you can get it done. But let's start at the bottom. What's all the way down here? There's a bunch of other junk in here, but don't worry about that so much. So basically I build my overlays in a series of layers. I usually have a video, which is what this is in the background that is just a looping uh, MP4 video. From which on top of that, I have our various webcams. In this case, this is my DSLR, my co-commentators uh, camera over here. I have whatever logo I have in here. This could be, um, you know, whatever tournament I'm casting on the day. Uh, this could just be, you know, whatever you need in that situation, whatever tournament you're working for. Uh, in this case, we'll just we'll just throw a generic Valorant logo right there. There we go. And from there, you want to put your two cameras. And on top of that, you want to drop, I call them frames. Um, there's a couple different terms that are used in the industry, but these are basically just sort of the boxes that help differentiate them um, from the background. And I'm going to be honest, part of this overlay package I built myself and part of it I just bought. I mean, if you're not really strong in the graphics, graphic design department, because let's be honest, you can't do everything as much as you'd want to in the world of esports, you can just go out there and find some really nice packages. Actually, Streamlabs OBS has some stuff sort of built in um, that you can just use, you can either for free or that you can buy. I, you know, drop 20 bucks on a package like this, you get a lot for it. it might be worth it if this is something you're looking to do and take a little bit more seriously. Um, from there, you just continue to sort of build assets on top of that, Twitter uh, logos, and then I even have a little opening uh, cinematic there. It's just another video that I built that I run at the start of the show. Speaking of start of show, let's talk about that. Boom. Um, oftentimes, you're gonna wanna have a stream starting soon. Screen again, this is the same background mp4 video with additional that can be these don't have to be animated by the way you can use uh j just pngs or, or actually just definitely use pngs you want to have that transparent alpha layer in there uh and again something as simple as finding a cool like royalty free piece of background maybe it's from the game that yourself that you're that you're casting throw some particle effects and pre-particle effects on that um and something like premiere or you know you don't even have to use adobe creative cloud uh to go on to the next step there you can just have something with a little bit of motion, a little bit of, you know, engagement. And then from there, uh, that's your starting screen. You want to use some, throw some music on top of that. From there, you'd come back to your casters. You'd set things up. Uh, I also want to really make a note. Please use royalty free music. Twitch has been cracking down of late on the DMCA claims. A lot of companies are um, coming out of the woodwork to claim music. There are a lot of great sources for that online. Um, I know the folks over at Alpha Gaming Channel, they've got something called Stream Beats. I think Harris Heller put that together. Um, which is a lot of like chill lo-fi stuff. There are a bunch of other production companies uh, that you can pay like a monthly fee uh, and you can get access to a bunch of free or not free, but paid production music from there. Uh, and that's definitely something I recommend using for this. Don't take any chances using non or copyrighted music. From there, I've also set up uh, an interview uh, screen from here. It's basically just a duplication of my duo lobby 
uh, scene and you can put a player name in there. That's like for post game interviews. If you want to drag them into a discord channel as well uh, and get that. Um, and what I do in terms of gameplay, this is going to be just a black screen because I don't have Valorant open right now, but uh, I just have different your your little team overlays. This is legit just a PNG. I went and took a screenshot of the game. This is like five minutes in Photoshop, just a, a simple basic shape. You can do this really, really simply um, from there. I have this duplicated and the colors swapped for this particular instance. You might also have to swap these side to side depending on what game you're casting. But make sure you have these linked, your scores and your team names linked across both scenes. So that way you only have to update them once as they swap sides. That's super important. Um, and from there, I usually like to have a, a BRB screen. I'll be right back when you're in between games, you're setting up your next lobby and then where you're gonna wanna end it. So a couple different things here. Uh, I'll just take us back to pseudo full screen on this one. Hey, we're back. Um, now you're gonna notice on the right-hand side over here, I don't have a whole lot going on in terms of audio. That is because of the additional hardware that I have going into this. Let's talk about hardware. Um, I have a uh, Go XLR, which is basically a standalone audio mixer. So I have everything being mixed in the physical product itself. And that's going into a single output here. For a lot of folks, you're probably not gonna have that at home. You're gonna have a microphone, you're gonna have your game audio, you're gonna have your caster audio. A lot of stuff going on here. How do you keep that all balanced? You can just try and balance it by ear as much as possible, but I definitely recommend using something like Voice Beater Banana, for example, to try and create those different audio signals. There's a ton of tutorials out there on how to use it. So you can actually split up as different channels here, your game sound and your, your microphone sound and your co-caster's audio. And that way you can visually look and say, where are they going to be lining up? And generally you're gonna want your caster audio to be, if you're an OBS, um, high end of the green into the middle yellow. So that way, if you do get really excited, you're only uh, getting up just into the bottom of the red and you're not peaking, that is super important. And then again, you wanna be able to balance that with your co-caster as much as possible. Now, in terms of gear, you, I have things like a stream deck going on right now so that I can easily you know, switch streams back and forth. You don't need all of this additional fancy equipment. You can just manually, you see me doing it here, you can just manually change your scenes as much as you need to. And that is a great way to get involved if you are just starting out because OBS is free. The barrier to entry is very low. It is super simple just to go out and get involved and you don't need a lot of hardware. Obviously, you know, I've got a you know, fairly expensive DSLR and a, a microphone and an audio interface, but you don't really need any of that. You can start this off with just like a Logitech C922, you know, maybe a, a decent USB microphone. Uh, Elgato just released a new one, uh, their Wave series that's pretty good and comes with some cool audio software as well, which does actually replicate what my Go XLR does and, and what Voice Meter Banana does, like I talked about earlier. You could also look at something like a, an AT2020, which is a really solid entry level USB microphone. There are a lot of options out there for you to get a decent looking setup for not a whole lot of money. But you also need a computer to go along with that. Um, and obviously computer specs are something people talk about a lot. I recommend you have something with at least an, an i7, probably a 1070 or above, hopefully something into the you know uh, RTX 20 series uh, would be pretty good. You know, you wanna be able to stream at at least 720p, 60 frames per second, ideally 1080p, uh, 60 FPS. And you also need to make sure you have internet, which is good enough to stream that at least 12 megabits per second upload speeds. That way you can stream uh, at at least 6,000 kpbs or kilobits per second uh, which will allow you to at least for most games ones that not aren't necessarily super visually intensive you can lower this uh, but for things like first person shooters and mobas you generally want to stream in at least uh, 6k uh, but all the way up to 8,000 kilobits per second as well if you are able to so I recommend at least having uh, again 12 up uh, to get that done hopefully this is giving you guys a good inner uh, overview uh, of what I do for my streams. I, I put the stream live, I put on some music, usually a timer for about 10 minutes. I introduce myself and my co-commentator. I talk about what we're gonna be seeing today in terms of gameplay. And then I try and get into the action, the gameplay as soon as possible. And that's really where you get to have fun. This is about you showing off your personality as a caster. All of this, the production is just a way to allow you to do that. It's just trying to make your stream look as good as possible to show off your casting, show off your humor and your insight into the game. That's really what it's all about. And if you wanna hear more about my insight and stuff I'm doing behind the scenes in esports, I am planning on making more content here on YouTube. So to be sure to subscribe 
And again, hit the like button, all the YouTube stuff. Uh, give me a follow over on Twitter as well. That's where I post uh, most regularly on the day to day. Uh, the stuff that I'm actually casting in my day job and everyday life, if you guys are curious about that. Thank you all so much for joining me. Hopefully this video was helpful and informative, and I will see you for the next one.